are you afraid of your electronics are you afraid to touch it is it a dark art i think it is i can't see electricity and uh I always get a little worried. I don't want to touch anything and uh, get hurt because I've made a few sparks in my day. <laughs> so if you're a new boat owner, here's are some topics that you should know about. Hi, I'm Simon and this is Aaron from Clarity Marine here in Grenada. So cruising sailors think is important is sails, engine, and really expensive electronics that can do everything and map 27 boats that are in their area and that is important what do you think is uh, missed out with importancy one thing that's often overlooked um, is the their boats electrical system um, it's either out of intimidation or not even knowing the systems that they have or sometimes it's just uh, out of fear of getting electrocuted um, usually it's just out of not knowing what's there and not knowing what they need to do with those systems. Um, and it really is as important as all the other systems that Simon just mentioned, and sometimes even more so. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine you're out in a beautiful remote anchorage, and the sun goes down and you don't have enough power to run your fridge and your freezer, and your beer gets all warm. Oh my God, that's terrible. Yeah. So Aaron, is your beer warm? Oh, we'll have to sort that fridge out. Let's call somebody to do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so in the past six months, um, I've seen some pretty significant things happen on customers' boats because they, they either weren't paying attention to their electrical system or they didn't know much about it. Um, in one case, a catamaran lost both of its rudders while at sea. Um, because of some um, uh, leakage current on their boat and in their last marina they were in the their rudder posts started to corrode and they were out at sea and they lost one after the other Um, so obviously um, a major problem was happening and they hadn't paid attention to their shore power system and how they connected Mm -hmm. and um, caused major problems Um, a couple weeks ago I was I dealt with a boat that had a water leak in their engine compartment and they didn't have a functioning bilge pump or it certainly wasn't automatic and the water came in and right now the engine is currently being craned out of the boat not a cheap repair bill no um and then um the past couple of weeks i've dealt with a uh no in the past year i dealt with a lithium battery bank that got completely um destroyed because it wasn't installed correctly and um, they weren't paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. And then we had another customer that lost their entire lead acid battery bank because they didn't know they were supposed to put water in it. Mm -hmm. And they had owned the boat for over a year and Uh, I went and visited and it was completely bone dry and um, bad things happened. So Mm -hmm. just, just knowing about the systems that you have is important. So these situations sound extreme and they are really, aren't they? If you have a basic knowledge of your boat electrical systems and follow the maintenance routines this this, this isn't, shouldn't really happen should it sure. and we all know that pre-owned boats are generally going to have this what about new boats they never have any issues out of the factory no they don't do they <laughs> <laughs> um, i see as many as many electrical issues with boats that are right out of the factory or a couple months old that have, they, the owners have just taken delivery or they're yeah. certainly let's say they're in their first year um, I see as many issues coming out of the factory as I do on a boat that's 10 years old I know it's, it's a shame really isn't it that you, th- you think you're buying a new boat you would be you know carefree sailing for a year or two right. mm, no. no are you afraid of your electronics are you afraid to touch it is it a dark art so if you're a new boat owner here's are some topics that you should know about Learn how to use your multimeter. Uh, it's one of the most basic and critical tools um, to have on a boat to keep yourself self-sufficient in troubleshooting. Um, as well as there's a handful of other key um, electrical tools that you should have on the boat to either troubleshoot or maintain your electrical system. Also, get to know your battery bank. What type of batteries are they? Are they they wet batteries, gel batteries, or lithiums? You need to know how to maintain them and keep them working as you want because with the dead batteries the life's going to be really hard right and with that battery system um, know what to expect so you should know at eight in the morning and by one in the afternoon and by 10 o'clock at night um, what your battery levels should Mm. be 
Exactly. Um, and then know your charging sources for those batteries. So you th and make sure they're working right. So know what sources you have, and know that they're actually working the way you think they're working. Corrosion. It's one of your worst enemies on a boat. And uh, it's important to know what to look for and where to look for it and where it's most likely to occur. <laughs> There's a saying in marine electrical that um, if you have an electrical problem on a boat, 90% of the time it's corrosion. Really? Um, the other 10% of the time, it's probably corrosion. <laughs> yeah. The best way to save money is to troubleshoot it yourself because sometimes... I've done it myself where I've got an electrician in and he's gone, oh, there it is, fixed. I'm like, oh God. And he goes, yes, thank you. <laughs> and I go, okay, yeah. Where if I'd have done it myself and had a look at it, got the multimeter onto it and checked it, you've seen that it was corrosion. And all I needed to do was clean it up, put it back together and switch it off and off it went. Yeah. yeah. So troubleshoot it yourself. Also, that'll help if you need to, if you don't know how to do it, then you can go and get yourself a marine electrician, but then you can say, well, I've done this, I've done that, can you help me? And that's important. It saves a lot of time when I come out to customers' yeah. boats and they've at least tried and they've, they've eliminated some potential um, mm -hmm. causes of the problem. Mm. Next, shore power. Um, the right way to hook up to it and what to look for before you do. Um, if you are a world traveling sailor, uh, you'll encounter all sorts of different types of dock pedestals, different types of power, different kind of connectors. So um, knowing generally how to connect to them and um, connect your boat to them and then problems to look for before you do it. And if you have problems when connecting to it, um, how to resolve them. Knowing when to call in the professionals because I've seen it <laughs> I've been on, some guy calls us on a boat, does anyone help? And so we went down to help. And, you know, what little knowledge I know about electrics, he'd gone, he knew less than me, and had gone so far into it, that instead of costing maybe one hour's work of a professional, it was about eight hours, because he'd mm. ripped everything out to try and find out what it was. And it wasn't even anything to do with what was actually wrong with the boat so it's knowing when to uh, call the professionals in and get them in to help you out because it can cost you a lot more money and sometimes it can be dangerous too yes um, especially with like shore power and pedestals Ooh, yes. you know yeah you can get out there with your multimeter and start playing around and you're not dealing with small current you could be dealing with 220 no. or some dangerous current so yes. um, yeah know know how far to be able to take it yourself and then at a certain point yeah, know your Call limits. somebody else in. Yeah, yeah know your limits. Yep. So I spent 20 plus years um, working on land, um, designing technology systems, um, and at least 20 years as either a sailor or a sailboat owner. And at some point, those two kind of collided, mm -hmm. and um, I started uh, working on boats. I became a ABYC electrician and started a business in the States, um, and I quickly found that one of my favorite things to do was meeting with boat owners and um, helping them explore their boat more, whether it was uh, around a specific problem yeah. or if it was just a, a, I don't know anything about any of the wires in my boat and every time I open a wiring cabinet it scrambles my brain as much as the <laughs> scramble of wires I see, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was just, they were, they were really intimidated. And um, over the years, um, I think it's been, I think 2013 is when I first opened my business in the U.S. Um, I found that that's my favorite thing, is just sitting and working with boat owners. Uh, maybe they're thinking about buying some new equipment, maybe we're troubleshooting a, a particular problem, or maybe they're getting ready to buy a boat and they need somebody to come in and just mm -hmm. give my opinion on yeah. the condition of things. Uh, or they've just bought it and they just need some training on uh, their battery systems or their electronics, or they want to add solar. The list can go on and on and on, but what's most important is um, sitting down and taking time with the owners um, to teach them about their systems and maybe the best way to solve a problem. Yeah, sounds good. I wish I'd, that had happened to me when I first took over this boat because I opened up the panels and I just looked at it and closed the panels again and, and just walked away because <laughs> I didn't want yeah. anyone to dare look at it and just hoped and prayed that nothing was going to yeah. go wrong. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, with um, with electrical systems on a boat um, ignorance is, is blissed kind of approach yeah um, that's a bad way to approach it mm. because it can lead to very expensive problems yes
So Simon and I have gotten together and we've put together a list of things, an audit um, for your own boat of co covering the basics of what you should know about your boat's electrical yep. system, uh, basics on how to troubleshoot those systems, and also when it's time to call in an expert. Yeah, but not touch it. So if you want to see the list, have a look below. Well, over the next couple of videos, what we're going to do is show you a wide range of battery maintenance, problem solving, tools, and a lot more. So please subscribe and like this video. It's somewhere around there, somewhere. What is? I don't know. Kim puts it in there, but she doesn't oh. show me. Do you have any questions about basic things you should know about your boat's electrical system? Do you know how to troubleshoot those systems? And are you curious as to when you should or should not call an expert? Get a copy of our free electrical systems audit for boaters so you can be proactive with your boat electrics, which means less stress, fewer costs and no nasty surprises. Follow the link located at the top right corner or you can find it below in the description. I always do it all wrong, <laughs> but Kim somehow okay. makes me look good. So that's, that's I used to say, who's farted? Who's farted? Uh, this is sausage time. Is there any wind over there? <laughs> <laughs> we laughed for two days. Next to each other, like on the morning show. <laughs> 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 that's all that's important, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>